Hello, everyone. This is Sherry Schwartz with Weight Loss for Women Over 50. And today we have Jessica Kishbaugh with us. Hi, Jess. Hi, Sherry. Nice to have you here. So Jessica is a holistic nutritionist and emotional eating coach and founder of the Loyo Method. It's a coaching program for women to heal and nourish their relationship with food and body through the power of food psychology and habit change. So Jessica specializes in nutrition, psychology, emotional eating, binge eating, stress reduction, and mindfulness. So with an intuitive eating and self-care approach, Jessica counsels clients to let go of dieting and emotional eating so they can create happier, wholesome, balanced lives and to empower them with confidence to live a life full of health, body positivity, and freedom. Jessica is certified as an integrative health coach, emotional eating coach, and mind-body nutrition psychology counselor. So she lives in New Jersey with her husband and three children. So she is here to tell us about how to overcome emotional eating. I want to hear that. So welcome, Jessica Kishbaugh. So happy to have you here. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be back. Yes. And of course, she's one of my fabulous speakers that comes on with me every time I ask her. So I do appreciate that because you're so valuable. So I always love to start out with what, how did you get where you're, where you are now, your story? Everybody always wants to hear the story of the speakers. So what's yeah. your story, Jess? I uh, will try to keep this as uh, brief as possible, but um, I struggled with body image, uh, weight, emotional eating for upwards of like 20 years and didn't really realize the emotional connection until I started doing the work. Um, and started realizing that, but lots of body image and disordered thinking around food and a ton of dieting behaviors where you're constantly trying this thing and that thing, and just never, never satisfied with myself. And um, that really had a ripple effect on how I behaved and how I showed up, you know, with others in, in school or with relationships or, you know, whatnot. And um I, I then, I actually then became an attorney and, um, practiced law for about 10 years. And that was a really, really stressful time in my life. And, you know, what better way to soothe stress than ice cream and reaching for food. And, you know, and I was constantly in this battle between dieting and, you know, really like obsessing about food, but then, you know, thinking about, oh, well, someone brought donuts or brownies into work. Should I eat it? Should I not eat it? And like having this willpower, but then all of a sudden that willpower would just go away because I'd be so stressed. And then I'd, um, or so perfectionistic in, in my, my personality, but also in my profession and all of that would go and jump into my dieting behaviors, my all or nothing thinking, like I cheated and had the brownie and now everything fails and I'm going to, you know, go on this spiral roller coaster in terms of then going into the ice cream. And then this is going to try to make me feel better. And, you know, and it becomes a spiral and then it becomes a cycle because after the spiral, then, then guilt comes into play. And then I'm like, Oh, well now I need to diet again, or now I need to go out and like go for a five mile run because look at what I just did or self-shame. And then you start identifying as this. So it, it was a real struggle for me. Um, I started doing inner work not another diet, um, real core inner work. I actually worked with three different types of mindset behavior coaches uh, through my transformation, realized um, also that I needed to change my career. <laughs> um, so I had like a personal, I had a physical and I had a career shift and transformation for myself. Um, went back to school and had some, you know, additional trainings and certifications and, um, really healed my own body and mind, um, actually lost the weight that I had been carrying for, for quite a while and was finally comfortable, was finally confident in my body, loving of myself, loving of my body, able to be in healthy relationships, met, met my husband, you know, like all of these things happened and then developed, you know, a business that is so 
rewarding. Um, I'm so passionate about what I do, not only because it's a, it has a personal touch to it, um, but I see how much women struggle in this space. And it's something that we don't talk about a lot, right? It's something that people hide from others, including their own spouses. And to provide a space to actually be able to feel safe in a community, to feel not judged, to work on the deep inner work of why am I using food to soothe my emotions, right? Why am I feeling this need to do it? Why do I know what to do, but then I don't do it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's really rewarding. And so that's that's where I'm at now. And, and I have, you know, I work with clients, I work with women um, mm -hmm. and we really work on um, nourishing not just our bodies physically, but our minds and um, helping to, to, to heal our relationship with food and develop a real thriving metabolism, especially as we get older, that becomes an issue. And there's a lot of other reasons beyond just, oh, I'm getting older um, that, that goes into that. that. That is a wonderful story, Jess. And I know that so many women, like you know, the whole masterclass series is women over 50, right? Because that's who I work with. And so often I hear, I know what to do, but that's when I just want to say, well, then why aren't you doing it? Because we do know what to do, but we can't get there. And consistency is like the number one thing on my surveys that women tell me that they, they just have such a struggle being consistent, you know, with really anything. So hidden wisdom in emotional eating, what is that? So it's interesting because we can, you know, we can look at emotional eating as a problem, as something that needs to be fixed, as a, mm -hmm. as a something that needs to be, you know, worked on. Um, but if we look at it and, and sure, right? Like, yes, there are consequences of emotional eating. Of course, right? It becomes the only coping mechanism we know. It um, it doesn't necessarily soothe the actual emotion. It's very short-lived and then you're back dealing with the emotion again because it's not actually soothing the emotion mm -hmm. um, or it's not coping. You're not coping with your mm -hmm. feelings. You're not processing your emotion and, or, you know, um, or it leads to, you know, lots of feelings of, of like shame and, and, you know, you continually emotionally eat. So you're in this sort of cycle. Um, but we don't have to fight it. We don't have to fight it. It's not something that needs to be like attacked. It's not the problem. It's not the enemy. It's, um, it's, it's, which a lot of women think it is right. It's like this war, we have to fight it and battle it and we have to win. Mm -hmm. The problem is we're just fighting ourselves at that point. And, you know, who wins, right? Like if one hand is fighting the other hand, who's the winner? So this sort of hidden wisdom strategy is to stop fighting with ourselves, stop fighting with self, you know? Um, it's about listening to ourselves, it's about growing, it's about um, having a self-compassionate approach because we we regulate emotions in all sorts of healthy ways, right? We, mm -hmm. you know, we listen to music, we exercise, we read good books, and sometimes we also do things in less healthy ways, like, I don't know, retail therapy, gambling, and food. Um, you know, I think that this sort of hidden wisdom is we need to understand what is the reason behind why we're doing. Every unwanted habit contains some sort of hidden wisdom, and we have to uncover that, and that's not through fighting. Um, so one thing I, you know, one thing about emotional eating that I can say in terms of sort of hidden wisdom is people think I just don't have good willpower. Like I don't have mm -hmm. iron willpower, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's not what it's about. It's, um, it's not about willpower. Emotional eating has a real like scientific basis. Um, it's not like I'm weak. I'm, I lack discipline. I need more willpower. I'm lazy. I'm fat. I'm gluttonous. Right. Um, that gives that sort of unwanted habit, more power and momentum. It's, you know, emotional eating actually like brings us into a more calm stress 
less state. It brings you from what's called sympathetic nervous system dominance, like stress state, to parasympathetic, to re relaxation state. So like it makes sense. So if we can like actually acknowledge why we're doing these things, um, it works, right? Like it actually calms us down. It it soothes us biologically. It soothes us psychologically. It's like most people who are binge eaters or emotional eaters, like you're in a stress state and it calms you down. So, you know, just having some of the knowledge about what it's doing and why it's doing, it doesn't mean like you're a weak willpower weakling, you know, it means that you're just trying to get to a stress less state. You're trying to get to a calmer state. Um, or, you know, some hidden wisdom, emotional eating can help you to uncover when you do the inner work. And we do a lot of this with our women in our program. Like what is the part of us that is not fully satisfied? Or how can it reveal to us the part of us that is not where our needs are not fully met? So like, for example, I don't know, there's like the little kid in us who just wants, you know, wants the ice cream, wants it now, right? It's like, we don't understand long-term consequences and, and little kids don't understand, hey, eating all this sugar right now is going to have all these long-term consequences. So we have that inner child inside of us somewhere. And our job is sort of to understand and listen, you know, when we can soothe that part of us or when it's simply better to let the adult voice take control and be conscious and, and make decisions around food. And, you know, we have all these different inner workings of us. You can have your inner child, but maybe you have an inner rebel. Actually, I was just writing a, a blog post about the inner rebel uh, before we jumped on here today. And it's, you know, the rebel, the one who doesn't like food restrictions and doesn't like rules and doesn't and does whatever it wants. And the inner rebel like goes against everything. And so maybe it's like, I know what I'm supposed to do. I know what I'm supposed to eat. I just don't do it. Right. You were just saying, I just don't do it. Consistency. But it could be that inner rebel. And there's techniques and 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 ways that you can actually tap into that inner rebel and do something about it and acknowledge it and actually take steps to work on that inner rebel. Anyway, and this is a really long answer to your question, mm -hmm. but there's so much here that is like taking a different approach to finding those <clears throat> sort of hidden messages. Like what hidden things can we find? What positive things can we find from emotional eating that is actually a way for us to learn and grow instead of berating ourselves and fighting our way and having all this, like trying to have this willpower and saying, you know, like there's something wrong with me. And, you know, there's a different way of looking at it. You know, and, and you bring up some good points there because some, so often it's that negativity that's running through our head all the time. You know, that you're like, Oh, what did I do that? Like I stink. I, you know, but you also made reference to retail therapy, you know, addictions, right? Gambling. That's, you know, that, that quick, you know, fix kind of. So that's, in, that, that's just so interesting to me. So when you work on these, this inner work that you're talking about, like, what are some strategies to get inside for the reasons that some of these things are happening? Um, so the reasons can be very various and that that definitely takes like, you know, conversation. It takes coaching conversations. It takes asking questions about yourself. And, you know, I, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of like pseudo therapy, almost. you know, it's like really trying to understand with a bigger picture. We do a lot of life coaching and lifestyle work. It's looking at the whole shebang because, you know, I'll give you a couple of examples. Like maybe you're a single person <clears throat> who <clears throat> has no, maybe, maybe you're a widow or maybe you were never married. Maybe you have no kids. And maybe that sense of loneliness and want for compassion and companionship and, you know, love and affection 
that that could be it. But if you don't ask the right questions and and know your client about what that is in your life, that could be it. Like that could be the root cause of I eat because I'm lonely. I eat because I feel sad about this. I eat because and you might not realize you're eating because of those things, but let's let's uncover that, right? Um, you know, we we work we look at the bigger picture. We look at what your stress is and how you can build better stress resilience. Maybe you're eating because you're just so stressed. Maybe you're eating because you're so busy and you're so on the run and you never just stop and press pause and literally enjoy your food and find pleasure in food. Maybe you're just eating just mm-hmm. to like eat. Um, you know, maybe you know, we look at levels of spirituality or, uh, sexuality or, you know, where are you fulfilled in life and where are you not fulfilled? And Mm -hmm. oftentimes emotional eating, overeating, binge eating behaviors are coming from this like level of dissatisfaction in areas of your life. And you're trying to fill it. You're trying to fill the void with food. You're try- and this is all subconscious. You're not consciously saying, I'm trying to build, fill the void with food. No, this mm-hmm. is a lot of subconscious behavior. It's, you know, I am not satisfied here. So I'm seeking satisfaction in all of these food choices. Or if we go on a diet and we're restricting mm-hmm. and we're like, mm-hmm. I will not eat this. I'm not allowed to eat this. I'm setting up all these rules for ourselves. And I see this a lot because of so many of the women that I work with are on these yo-yo diets, just like I was for years and years and years. So I restrict, I restrict, I withhold all day. I'm so good all day. And so you think you're doing all the right things, but then you binge and then, or you just overeat or you cheat. And the reason is because you're not satisfied during the day. You're not mm-hmm. satisfied during the day. You're not getting enough good nutrients. So your body internally is saying, I'm not satisfied body. Like I I need certain nutrients to feel satisfied. So I'm going to seek satisfaction in another way, or you're not mentally satisfied or you're not emotionally satisfied, you know? So there's ways that we can look at like all the different pictures and see where are we satisfied? Where are we not satisfied? And it's really important work. It is. And when you restrict and restrict, and then it just comes on like a vengeance, there's no stopping it. Right. But your body is telling you. Go ahead. And then we think, we think, I just don't have good willpower. No, yeah. it's not, a, it's not that, right? There's so yeah. many things. It could be bio, you know, biology, psychology. It could be nutritional deficiencies. It could be the way that you're, again, not satisfied in certain areas. There's so many other things that we need to like look at. Mm-hmm. And I guarantee you, it's not because you have, you know, weak willpower. Or you no, know, as you were explaining how busy everybody is, right? Because we're just go, our society's just go, go, go. And I even tell my children about this and I'm like, you do not have to always pack something in the car to go with you. You don't have to always be eating and driving. You don't always have to stop at the gas station to get another cup of coffee or I'm like, those are just habits. It's something that you feel that you need to do. And yeah, it's just something that as a society, we're so busy and we're just like grabbing, right? And just going through our day, kind of like on autopilot, like, like you were explaining. So it's interesting that you say that because there is a lot of people who don't identify as being an emotional eater. And so they may be like, oh, well, this isn't for me, but we don't have to even identify, right? I don't even like to to label people. I don't think that we should label ourselves. I think that you, it's much better to say I eat emotionally versus I am an emotional eater. Like that doesn't have to be your identity. It can change. However, go, go, go behaviors, mindless eating behaviors, fast eating, boredom eating, habitual grab and goes when we're not hungry. It falls into that like very like bigger umbrella. And I would still call it emotional eating because it falls into that umbrella of like, a lack of intuitive eating, a lack of eating because you actually are hungry. It's a lack of mindful eating. And so these are all the spaces that again, like there are are tools to work on as to what to do or how to slow down or how to be intuitive with food or how to be intentional, how to actually know when you're hungry, how to actually know when you're satisfied or full or satiated. Like it's not necessarily just about, I feel emotion, and therefore I soothe emotion. 
maybe you're trying to distract from something, not just soothe. Maybe you're distracting. Maybe you're trying to like, um, you know, uh, you know, just fill the void, fill the space, fill the loneliness, fill the sadness, fill the boredom, fill, the, you know, there's, there, this is the inner work, right? Like this mm -hmm. is like, there's, it's complex. So it involves really digging in to see, okay, what is going on in my whole life? Not just what food should I eat? What food should I not eat? And then what happens when I cheat and why can't I have iron willpower? It's, it's so much more than that. It is. And that's where I really want to get that message out too, that it's okay to have a conversation with a coach, right? Someone who understands and that can help you and give you the support and the accountability, you know, such as yourself, especially in the emotional eating area in that arena, right? So don't be afraid to reach out to someone like Jessica if you're going through all of these struggles. Because I'm sure that you have like a, a free time where they can call and talk to you, right? To, to yeah, just get an idea of how you can help them. So um, slowing down, you and I talked a little bit about this before we hopped on. And you even mentioned a really good book that um, you can mention again if you choose to. So how can slowing down help us to lose weight? So as I mentioned sort of before, like emotional eating um, and why it makes sense biologically, which is why we need to just give ourselves a little bit of grace in the process. It takes you from a stress state to a calm state, and then you can actually feel calm. And then once you're calm, you're like, oh, okay. Like I have all this food that is now in my body and, and now I need to digest it. Okay. So we want to get ourselves into calm state. Um, one of the, and when we're in calm state, when we're in like a relaxation response, your body can finally like focus on digestion. It can fuel your metabolism. Calm state is like the ideal place to be. Um, we just don't want to do it by then by overeating. We want to get to the calm state naturally. How do we get to the calm state naturally? Lots of different ways. Um, one is working on your stress, right? One is like building stress resilience in your life. And we do that, you know, maybe it's your time management, maybe it's your work-life balance, maybe it's your self-care, maybe it's decluttering your, I don't know, like whatever is going on in your life, like we want to build resilience to stress. But this other concept of relaxation response is how you're eating. It's not what you're eating. It's the process of eating slowing it down, slowing the pace and finding pleasure in food. And there's a lot of reasons, again, in terms of not spiking your stress response. When you spike your stress response, digestion gets shut down, metabolism gets shut down. It's like putting the water on the fire. We need a fire to burn. We need a fire going inside of us. That's your metabolism. That's your like thermic energy that's burning calories. So we need that. Um, when you're in a stress response, that gets put to the back burner. So we need calm relaxation response so that your metabolism can flourish, so that you are having energy, so that you are burning that unwanted fat. And so getting yourself into relaxation response is so key. I work with clients sometimes that we don't focus on the nutrition at all. I say, put that aside. I don't even care what you're eating. All I want you to do is eat single purpose at a time. Don't multitask. Okay. Do not eat in front of the TV, sit down at a table. That's huge for people. Like that's a mm -hmm. big step, but yeah. like, you know, yeah. especially single women who are eating in front of the TV at night or working while you're eating or driving while you're eating or standing while you're cooking food for your kids and just eating like, and shoving food in your mouth mindlessly. What happens is there's a couple things that happen. One is sometimes you don't even realize what you're eating or how much you're eating and you're not enjoying it. So therefore you end up eating more because you're still seeking satisfaction from the food. Cause you don't even realize you're like, I don't even know what I ate or if I enjoyed it or not. So I'm going to just keep eating and keep eating and keep snacking because I'm still looking for that level of satisfaction. Again, it's not necessarily conscious, it's subconscious behavior. Slowing down also puts you in that relaxation response. So you're able to be calmer. 
your digestive system is functioning, your metabolism is functioning, you're able to be present with your food, taste your food, find joy in your food. Like this is helping that process so that you don't end up being an emotional reactionary person and you are savoring your food. Interestingly enough, sometimes when you can actually sit down and and mindfully eat a McDonald's hamburger and savor it. If you ever tried to savor a McDonald's hamburger, guarantee you, if you slow down and savor a McDonald's hamburger, you can't really do that. It is not savorable in my personal opinion, right? Like, and you will realize these things because sometimes we're just so hungry or we're just so rushed that we eat these Mm -hmm. things and we don't realize that like, we're not actually getting joy from this food. We're just eating it just to eat it. And so if you can find pleasure and joy in your food and slow the roll, you know, slow your roll, slow your pace, breathe, put your fork down, savor the food, you might be able to say, okay, I'm going to have that piece of chocolate cake. And it might be this like small sliver that you can savor and enjoy and feel really good about and not be sufficient for you as opposed to like gobbling down, like, you know, half of a, half of an entire cake or something. And, and that, and that's a real win when you can actually do that. Um, yeah, the, the book that I was, I was, uh, talking about with you, this it's called the slow down diet. And, um, and it mentions a couple of these different things and it's, it's a wonderful Mm -hmm. book. It's written by a mentor of mine, actually, um, Mark David. And, you know, I work with him in the mind body eating space in the food psychology space. So it's, you know, he's a real wonderful mentor in terms of this, this type of work. Wonderful. I I love the analogy of the McDonald's burger. That's awesome. But the other thing that I was thinking about when you were um, describing things was we don't have to finish what's on our kid's plate or grandkids plate, right? Yeah. My kids are, my three kids are grown, but I have two beautiful granddaughters. They're two and five. And, you know, like Romy didn't finish her strawberry. So I, you know, ate her strawberries. At least it was just, it was strawberries, right? I'm like, oh, I'm not going to throw those out. But if there's something else there, I don't have to finish it for her just because she didn't eat it because I don't want to throw it away. You know, if I can, I'll put it in the refrigerator. But sometimes we feel that, oh, we'll just, we'll just finish it for them. Well, I might not be hungry, Mm -hmm. you know? But, but yeah, just running through the drive through or doing these things that we're just so used to doing, right? And we're not even thinking about why are we doing this? What's driving me? Am I really hungry? Mindfulness work is an enormous piece of this puzzle. And that's a really broad, broad, broad term. And it comes in all different shapes and sizes. But the point is to ultimately be really present in your moment And you can do that with food. You can do that with your kids. You can do that with a lot of different things. You can do that meditating. It doesn't mean meditation, but you know, you are mindful when you're meditating, but being really present and conscious without judging. And that's a key part of mindfulness. And when you can do that, and also what you said about throwing food out, right? That's a, that's another beast to tackle, right? It's another area to get into because there are real reasons why we feel that way. It could be scarcity mindset. It could be how we were raised. It could be the, you know, what we think about food and money. And so there's a lot kind of there that needs to be unpacked in terms of, you know, why we don't want to throw things out and instead why we just eat them ourselves. Um, but, but yeah. Well, thank you so much. I know that you have a free guide for us and emotional eating toolkit. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, Sure, sure. Um, So this is a good way for you to start taking the steps towards understanding, you know, your, what I call your physical cravings, but also your Mm -hmm. emotional cravings and a couple of steps that you can take that, um, employs some mindfulness skills. So it's a little bit of mindfulness here and, and sort of stopping and understanding what do I need right now? Right? Like, what do I need right now? And how do I actually figure that out? And is it, is it physical? Is it emotional? What is the physicality? What is the emotion? What do I need? How can I meet my needs? Um, And it's a learning experience and it's not an overnight fix. I think that's really the important part is that this 
this work takes work and it takes time, but this is a good way to understand, hey, this is a good way to start my practice. It's an ongoing practice. You're not perfect. That's what practice is. Um, but it's a good way to ask, okay, well, what else can I do? And how can I really introduce consciousness here? And how can I be mindful? And how can I ask myself some questions? And how can I stop fighting, right? Stop mm -hmm. fighting with ourselves. Call a ceasefire. Stop fighting. Forgive. Love. Not fight. So it's a little bit about that. And those are some difficult things to do. Sure are. Just hearing you say those and like even forgive, you know, take, take care of yourself. And one that most of us women don't do is putting ourselves first because we've put our kids, our husbands, our spouses, our partners you know, everybody else first for so long. And I hear women say, it's my time now. It's my turn now, you know, and that identity. So yeah. that is so good. So any last piece of advice or actionable step you want to leave people with today, Jessica? Um, yeah, I, I talk about this a lot, especially because I, I call myself a recovering perfectionist. Um, and I think a lot of women in the space of emotional eating, overeating, binge eating behaviors are also similar in perfectionistic behaviors, all or nothing, good food, bad food, right? Uh, either I have to do it perfectly or I'm a failure, that sort of mentality. Here's the thing about being perfection, about, you know, perfection in general. Um, it's kind of boring kind of boring. Would you want to spend time with someone who's absolutely perfect? No. Imper you know, imperfection is, you know, my, I, I guess my, my word of advice is start to embrace your imperfections and accept your imperfections along the way of this process of imperfect action. So we talk about imperfect action all of the time. Like it is a process. It is an imperfect process that requires courage and bravery because it will, you know, it allows yourself to be vulnerable, be accepting of my emotional eating behaviors, learning from them. Yeah, I ate a lot of dessert last night. Totally did. But this is what I can learn from it. Here are my hidden wisdoms. You know, I'm okay. It was delicious. I let myself do it. I'm going to forgive myself. I'm going to be, give myself grace. And what can I learn from this experience? And what do I need next time? probably not three slices of cake, maybe just one, right? Like maybe next time I'm going to actually take it slower. Maybe next time I'm going to make sure it's like a 10 out of 10. Maybe next time I, you know, I'm going to, you know, eat it twice as slow, maybe not, whatever, whatever is the hidden wisdom for yourself, but it's not about bad, bad me. I ate three slices of cake. That's fighting. That's berating that self, you know, it's about, okay, I'm imperfect. This is a process. It's a journey. And I'm going to take imperfect action and I'm going to keep making improvements in an imperfect way. I love that. That is so good, Jess. So for those of you tuning in, make sure to check out Jessica's end emotional eating toolkit. The links for everything are going to be below the video here. The it's end the vicious cycle of restrict binge guilt restrict crush those uncontrollable cravings if I could speak discover what you need emotionally instead of using food to soothe so grab that toolkit from Jessica and be sure to tune back in to the rest of our weight loss for women over 50 master class series thank you so much for joining us today and thank you Jessica Kishbaugh such just great advice for everybody thank you Sherry so much for having me it was a pleasure Thank you.